During the reign of the Three Georges, British interest in India had escalated from the business ventures of the East India Company to the supremacy of a military force under a governor general. The diminished power of the old Mughal emperors and the tactical genius of an East India Company clerk, Robert Clive, meant that French ambitions in Bengal were thwarted and Britain was the only power left on the Indian continent. The governor of Bengal until 1785 was the remarkable Warren Hastings, but British rule was generally not benign. Of the situation, Churchill says, the object of the East India Company was to make profit. How the country was ruled, they neither knew or cared. The ill-paid servants of the company were forced and encouraged to take bribes, presents, and every kind of shameful perquisite from the inhabitants. Get here first. Well, look, I, I, I've walked. What? You've only been in India five minutes and you've broken the first commandment. Thou shalt not walk. Oh, look at you. I'll be damned if that's not the same old suit you arrived in. Well, yes, yes. I threw yes. a better one than that away this morning. You know, we Westminster chaps must stick together. I've got a pea green at home. Go with your face like cheese and celery. <laughs> oh, look. My God, it's a massacre. My God, it is. Be brave, old chap. We, we ought to want the fort. Women and children first. Come on, remember Plassey. Let's see the worst. when they've just dined. At breakfast time? A Calcutta dinner finishes with breakfast. Here, let me show you. Mmm. Irresistible. Come and meet the three greatest men in Bengal after Governor Hastings. Macpherson. He's a Caledonian locust. Made his pile in Madras. Next in line for the chair, then he'll take his 10% of empire. This military Lucullus is General Barker. Old Bullocks, as the boys call him. 
from a certain resemblance to that beast. <laughs> He's never won a battle, keeps all his fire for the rear. <laughs> Meet Samuel Jelks, Esquire, our Midas Methuselah, and the company's chief factor. He's a face like a note of credit tucked in a black man's ball strap. <laughs> that nose! Did you ever see such a bun? I'm damned if I don't tap it for a quart of claret. <laughs> Come on, old nosy. Come on. Oh, go high, go high. Good morning, General. Who the hell are you? Pot, sir. You remember Pot? Uh, fell under your table once, and you said, Pot by name, Pot by nature. Just like that. Famous. Uh, beg to introduce Jack Cleveland. Uh, Sir John Cleveland's boy, come out as a writer. Just come out, have you? Yes, sir. I'll give you a bit of advice. Never trust a Bengali. They don't drink, they fornicate. That's why there's so damn many of them. You know, onto the fort. Is that the Sir John Cleveland who was killed at the Battle of Buxer? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, that was it. Sad loss, to be sure. But in a good cause. He had a great accession of territory after that battle. Yeah, you're in the military line yourself. Oh, no, no, sir. My mother couldn't afford to buy me a commission. No, no, there would have been no share for her. I, uh, I must do something for you, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Courage, courage. Uh, thank you, sir. Don't count it, Jack. Promises are free. Oh, Mr. Jelks, sir. Your servant, sir. Your servant, Mr. Jelks, sir. I beg to introduce. Mr. Jelks, I'd like to introduce. Damn it, Jack, where are you? Oh, I. I feel like a poor relation. What, proud? You can be proud when you've made your pile and gone to bed in England. Here, the word is patronage. Bow, boy, bow. This is India. Name is it? The cure. For what? Calcutta crabs. Hmm? Cleveland? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, don't dangle. You'll get nothing from dangling. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, uh, uh, your servant, sir. Uh, let's have a look at you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, I buried better. I'll maybe bury ye two Bengals a burying place. If you live, you'll soon have more acquaintance below ground than above it. I'll give you three rules. You can take them or leave them. Keep your hat on in the sun, your hands in your own pockets, and your feet in your own bed. Are you still here? Never trust a blackie. He'll leave you without the cash for your passage home. Thank, thank you, sir. Yes. Haven't you gone yet? Oh. Oh. Stay clear of the church, the courts, the tavern, and the jail, and if you're not quite an idiot, you may make a fair fortune in six or seven years. <coughs> if you live that long. <coughs> oh, oh. <coughs> go <Goy> high. <coughs> Show the sob out. <coughs> thank, you, thank you, sir. I can't stand a dangler. Damn it, you know how much money I've got better than I do. You keep every damn rupee. Many times I am telling this up. Apply to Lord Hastings for a residency. Then money will come like swallows and he will repay not kiss. Damn it, I don't want to leave Calcutta and stew up country. Bobbing up and down all day at the Durbar of some black pudding. Kohai, hookalow. If the Saab could apply for a license to deal in opium and salt, they go to the boys in Hastings' house. Then the Saab's credit with General Barker for an army contract. I've sucked my credit dry. But Jack hasn't. He's as fresh as a newborn baby. 
Oh, the old Doug's in town are hanging out for Sir John's boy. Jack! Oh, now listen, Nob. No tricks. Just what's fair and square, and we all do. He's my chum. Jack! Jack, this is Nob Kissing, my banya. No, don't shake his hand. Anyway, he won't touch you. He's a Brahmin. He'll only touch your cash. Cleveland South, your ever-honoured father was my best friend. Oh, shut up. Just fill him up like a gentleman. Punch, Lau. For the Saad's immediate requirements, I will purchase the goods of one recently deceased. His books, his bookcases, his palanquin, his carriage, his horses, his harpsichord. Oh, no, I, uh, um, I don't play the harpsichord. <laughs> His mechanical organ, which plays the concertos of Handel Saab with accompaniment. Bob, I don't need all this, surely. What? How the deuce do you know what you need? It's the other chap who don't need him. <laughs> it will cost the Saab nothing. 8,000 rupees, a mere 1,000 pounds. But I, I only earn 50 pounds a year. Which I will lend him at 5% interest. 50 pounds a year. Now for his servants, a butler, cook, bearer, washerman, sweeper, groom, not more than 20 men, and as many women as the Saab requires. I'll yes. see to that. Well, Jack, how's it feel to be a man of fortune? You mean to owe a fortune? Let Nob worry about that. He'll find a way, won't you, Nob? Get out. There are many ways to a palace but only one way to a hovel. Pot special to friendship. You've ruined me. I've made you, Jack. Not will scheme like anything to pay himself back, and when he's done that, you'll be rich. What does he want me for? You rule Bengal. One day you might be governor. And in the meantime, well, you'll find out. Come on, I hate business like the devil. It's your first night. Let's have some fun. No, not for me. No more for me. Well, my first night in Calcutta lasted a week. No, Bob. Bibby. I say. You wouldn't, uh... Mother. I like the fox child green whose mate hath left her side, who hunts from morn till eve, chase over a country wide. I like the fox child green whose mate hath left her side. Don't waste your time, Master John. She's as tight as a Chinaman's smile and looks to marry a fortune. Forgive the liberty. Wasn't your father my best friend? Augustus Hickey, Tribune of the People. Hickey's Bengal Gazette or Calcutta General Advertiser. Hmm. Who is she? Amelia Rangham, Orazan, an anonymizer in my paper, Bel Canto. a stepmother, Mrs. Johnson. She's been in Bengal since the Black Hole. Some say she was in it, but I have the opinion she was it. That's scumless, sir. Is it? Then I shall write it down. Now, has everybody got a cup of tea? Miss Blanket? Miss Charlotte Blanket? Daughters of the Reverend B. Deceased, looking for a marriage bell in which to spread themselves. I've got them down for Finney and Squish. Uh, who? Phineas Hall, ensign in the army. Dick Sykes, one of Hastings' boys. Um, uh, who, who are Hastings' boys? Dick Spittles of the great mogul at Government House. Sapless offsprings of political men at home who keep the Tory tyrant in his power. Sure isn't the whole community crying out for freedom. Uh, for the natives. 
Who's talking about them? The dirty, lying, thieving, conniving Jack, black Jack, uh, Jack, I don't know what they up to. That's Hickey, Calcutta, General Scandalizer. No, no he, he attacked Hastings. The pox is not particular. Oh, he writes the news. What news? We're half a year away from Europe. The moment you're the news, for what it's worth. <laughs> Mr. Potts, I'm waiting for you to bring that young man over to me to pay his devoirs. Begum Johnson, I lay me unworthy head at your spectacular feet. Don't be an idiot. Hmm. Well, you've got your father's look. I hope you don't have his luck. Uh, well, have you been introduced to Mr. Jelks? I've met him. He's a dangler. Then let me present Miss Stepdaughter, Miss Rangham. No. Now, Mr. Cleveland. Tell me everything that was going on in London when you left. Well, well, well King George III had recovered his wits. And, and, and Lord North was still the minister. Who's he? After your time. The, the war in the American colonies was progressing... Who cares about very... the war? No, tell me about the fashion. What colour is the latest bon ton? Well, is it true that wastes have risen and uh, we're all to look in the family way? <laughs> <laughs> Did Miss Gunning really go to the Duke of Hamilton's ball undressed as Eve? <gasps> green! Everybody's wearing green. The, the, the wastes have risen till they can't rise any further. <laughs> and and, 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 and Miss, Miss Gunning went absolutely on that too. <laughs> Well, I could hardly wear green. I could hardly go on that tour. Well, I could hardly go in the family way. I can't wait to do all three. Oh. Why is everyone so excited? The fashion, Jack, the fashion. Anything that makes life bearable in this damn climate. What else are we to do but change our clothes three times a day? The evening gun, Miss Blanket. We will all sing Mr. Carey's new anthem. Manifest of the company ship Seahorse. Uh, coarse cloth. Middling ditter. Superfine ditter. Cotton. Coral. Cochineal. By God, it's hot, Gabriel. By God, Saab, it is very hot. After cochineal is coming coffee, Saab. Uh, coffee. Cinnamon. Cloves. Camphor. Gopal. Huh? What do you think of the British in Bengal? I'm thinking that perhaps you will come and you will go. And I will stay here. Uh, coconut oil. Jute. Linseed. What do you think of me? You are coming from strange country with dirty habits. Uh, not to be offended, Saab. But we are very clean people. We are washing and taking bath every day. Well, I'm not exactly filthy. Oh, please, Saab. You are very filthy. You are using hand for unclean purpose and then putting it in your mouth. You are also bringing unclean spirit into my country. And it is going to be very difficult to get rid of it. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, do not be sorry, Saab. 
You cannot help it. You are English gentlemen. <clears throat> oh. oh, I'm fried. Damn it, you could eat me with a dash of lemon. <laughs> Get out, you beast. You make me dizzy. Bob, there's no need to insult him. He's a friendly little fella. Here. Damn it, Jack, don't mix. Oil and water. Oh? What about you and Bibi? I don't say don't touch. Don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> the seahorse. Oh. She'll do. Oh, this is a fine ship's manifest. Um, to Amelia, dear um, little no, Bob, smiling Bob. god of love. Bob, Bob. Leave, leave, they starry throne above. To Calcutta town, haste, wing thy way. Oh, my dear maid, Bob. attend thy prey. Bob. Oh, sweet Miss Rannum, take my hand and make a slave of thy Cleveland. <laughs> Your hand's no good to her. Add this to the ship's cargo, will you? Now, what the deuce did I come in for? You can't ship opium. It's not for me. It's for Nob Kissen. And stamp these. They're for you. These are licenses to trade. I, I'm not allowed to trade. Well, no one's allowed, but they all do. Damn it, if you won't, I will. No! I won't break the law for Nob Kissen. How else do you think you're going to pay him back what he lent you? Sell everything. Sell everything and dismiss the servants. And you should do the same. Don't be an ass. How much do you think I get for the lot? 10,000 rupees, 20,000? I owe 200,000. I won't break, break the... the rules laid down by a parcel of cheesemongers in Leadenhall Street who pay you 50 pounds a year to do their dirty business worth five million. I won't break the law. Don't talk to me about the law. Treat it like the sun. Keep out of it. Well, it's too hot to argue. If you won't, you won't. But you do me a disservice. I'll leave your house tonight. What the deuce for? We're still chums, aren't we? You're gonna make me do something I hate like the devil. But I admire you for it. I'm damned if I don't. My friends at home will be disappointed, Your Excellency. Yes, but not more so than I will be when they vote against me on the board. Is that to be the reason for your appointment to a residency? No one else to speak for me, sir. Some ladies here speak for you, I believe. You're in debt, I suppose. It's the wretched system that sends boys out where they expect to live like princes. And now you've drained Calcutta dry, you're looking for new sources. It's not for me, sir. It never is. If I had my way, I'd hang every knob kissing from a tree. They exploit us and we exploit the Empire. <laughs> Soon we'll owe the Indians so much we'll be obliged to conquer India to repay them. What do you know about India, Mr. Pot? We're the red bits, sir. I've seen them grow from pinpricks, and the company grow from a handful of traders to a great officer in the Empire, ruling millions, bringing laws and justice, making wars and treaties. Now, this war, I presume you know whom we're fighting. The enemy. The French, Haider Ali, and the Maratha Confederacy. That's everyone. Our survival depends on our capacity to support our armies. We need money, Mr. Pot. And there is money here. The Kingdom of Oud, our ally and last stronghold of the Mughal Empire. And we're going to capture it. The Nawab of Oud has died, leaving a treasury of three million pounds and a debt to the company of one and a half millions. Ah. His son, Azafudala, refuses to pay the debt. It is said he is under the influence of his mother and grandmother, the Begums of Oud. Do you speak Persian? Well enough to buy a carpet. I appoint you resident of the capital, Lucknow. You will represent our interest and do your utmost to recover the debt. And, Mr. Pot, you will respect the Nawab's authority and treat him with deference. For yourself, you can deal in opium and salt. I trust that will suffice. Bum, 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 bum,
Where the devil have you been? We were supposed to have dinner together. You're not going to shoot me for that. Well, where have you been? I've been helping a female friend. You could say to a pregnancy. Oh. Well, well, who was it? Who was it? I'm bully me, Jack. It's me last night. You may never see me again. Oh, damn. Did it have to be on me? Well, you're better off without her. Well, I gotta tell you! Yes, Lord. When is the, uh, the Potsaib going? Potsaib has gone. What? Oh, is you, you're following with the baggage? No, sir. I'm a present from Potsaib. The house, the servant, the hooker, the punch bowl, and the baby. Potsaib is giving them to you. I'm surprised he didn't leave me with a baby! He did. He's left me with a baby. Money don't grow on trees. Oh. Yes, it does. Not the one I'm sitting under. I'm doing all I can. <sighs> Cleveland Sark. This will not pay one month's interest on the amount due to me. Show yourself out, Nob. If the Saab will not pay his debts, his servant will be obliged to apply for British justice to the courts. Oh, British justice. It is one of the benefits you have brought to India. You hate us, don't you? You hate us from the bottom of your soul. Why should I not hate you? You have conquered India by the sword. Your young men lord it over us. I am a Brahmin of the highest caste, and you are the lowest of the low. Yet I must bow to you. Obey your laws. See my country stripped by your rapacity. 
Why should I not hate you? But that I despise you, I do not hate what I despise. I'll do something for you, Cleveland, when I'm Governor General. But until then, well, I'm a poor man myself. And uh, you'd never believe the demands that are made on my charity. His worship keeps half the highlands. Oh, at home they believe that India is a bottomless treasure house and that I hold the key. Sir, if uh, you could let me have credit to purchase diamonds, uh, then... There's a lot against shipping diamonds. And it's not as profitable as it used to be. Oh, well, some other job. <laughs> some trade. Trade? <laughs> The war that Governor Hastings has embarked upon is putting it into trade. He never seen peerless now, not traders. No, we are, we are rulers, we are soldiers, we are tax collectors for the government. Well, that rich man can't he put his finger on a penny. There is nothing left to trade in. Slaves. No, no, they die before they reach America. Englishmen are slaves in their own country. Today, Bengal lies under the heel of a tyrant worse than Arlong Zabe in the attitude of his power. Under the toe of Hastings, Helanto, it preserves a metaphor. Freedom is slavery, honesty is poverty, justice is arbitrary, and free speech is damnatory. Now, that's a clever, for I have written it damn a Tory. Yes. Sir, if, if I don't pay my debt, they'll put me in prison. Then I suggest you make good your escape. You slip aboard a ship secretly and pay for your passage when you get home. I don't need advice, Mr. McPherson. I need money. <laughs> Got yourself in a pickle, have you? You yunkers, a slip slop mold dawdly lot. Straight from Mammy's apron strings without an ounce of proper spirit between you. <laughs> At your age, I sacked my first town and tasted the first fruits of victory. <laughs> Let me mark a more than one brown buttock. Will you help me, sir? For my father's sake. Well, not in your line. What help can I give you? A contract with the army to supply bullocks. Bullocks? <laughs> There's not a bullock to be bought this side of Patna. <laughs> I got all the bullocks. <laughs> Dragged them off the field with their plows behind them to pull my guns. Mm. Going up country with you. Take a glass of low shrub. Mm. Up country with Governor Hastings to some godforsaken place called. Out. Mm, trouble. <laughs> I'll give them trouble they'll never forget. General Barker, please. Please. For God's sake, pull yourself together, man. Don't let them see you like this. They'll think we've lost our nerve and rise up and cut our throats. Oh, all right, I'll help you. How much do you want? Two hundred thousand rupees. I'll give you a bit of advice. Never borrow money, it gets you nowhere. You go from one man to another, lose all your friends and land up in the gutter. Can't say more than that. Your servant, sir. <laughs> Come on, my beauties. This time, I'll be the driver and you be the GGs. Cleveland? You made such a clamour, I came down here. What is it? Is the go-down on fire? Some trouble in Blacktown? What's the matter? It's personal, sir. Well, couldn't you wait until tomorrow? What have you done? Have you killed a man? He wouldn't get me out of bed for less. Mr. Jones, I... I, I owe my banya 200,000 rupees. You dare to get me up for a paltry debt? This is the very... Pendulum of dangling. Oh, sir, sir, Who I, is it, Samuel? What uh, is wrong? Miss Rang. Miss Rang. Sir, you are addressing Mrs. Jelks. We were married yesterday. Married? T -t to him? Yes, Mr. Cleveland. I am married to Mr. Jelks. Lost your spit, have you? Like you lost your rupees? You think all a woman wants is a young ram? Well, you're wrong. She wants a country mansion, a townhouse, 
a carriage of his own and enough cash to lose at cards. And I'll give her a brat into the bargain. Yes, I'll have a brat into the bargain. Oh. Don't you think the latest fashion suits me, Mr. Cleveland? I could be in the family way already. I'll, I'll write to Bob. Who's Bob? Nobody I know, Samuel. If Mr. Cleveland has a friend called Bob, he'll oblige me by, uh, by not mentioning my name to him. Good night, Mr. Cleveland. Good. I'll be up to you in a minute. About your business. I have no business here, sir. As you wish. But I'll see you back to England on the first ship of the season as a pernicious dangler. Well, Cleveland, what am I to do with you? Send you home a pauper and break your mother's heart or throw you into prison? Prison, sir. I understand. If my mother had lived, I'd have said the same. I think you're a good man who's fallen under the evil influence of our wretched system. We cannot run a country like a haberdasher's shop. Dick, what would you do with Cleveland? Oh, give him to Miss Blanket, sir. Let you off the hook. Phineas? Why, transfer him to the army, sir. Which is it to be? The campaign or the counterpain? The army, sir. Very well. But listen to me. We are here, but we will not always be here. We undertake a great trust and a great responsibility. We must rule India like a mother, her children, guiding them, bringing them to maturity, and then letting them go so that they remember us with affection and respect. Yes, sir. Be not one whose motive for action is the hope of reward. Perform your duty, abandon all thought of the consequence. Yes, sir. Do you know where that comes from? Yes, sir. It's Lord Chesterfield's letter, sir. <laughs> the Bhagavad Gita, the holy book of the Hindus. Y yes, sir. Our victories at sea and in the south have enabled me to propose a general truce. I'm going to Lucknow to meet the Maratha ambassadors and also to settle a local disturbance caused apparently by your friend Mr. Pott. You'll attend me on my staff. Thank you, Your Excellency. Their sentries out. The question is do we go on as we are? Or we'll wait for the chief to arrive? The General Barker of the army. It really depends on the resident. Where the devil is Bob? He could be dead for all we know. Country up for miles around, no peasants in the field, and all the wells blocked. I think we should wait for the army. What do you think, Jack? Well, my father told me that in the face of danger, I should never go back. It wasn't very good advice, was it? Of course, the best advice an Englishman could give. So I say we go on. Oh. Really? Oh, ah, so hot. Oh, damn it, is that you, Jack? I see you've got a new tailor. Oh. Where's the guff? There's a day behind us with the army. Oh. What's this situation, Mr. Oh. Hot? Hey, I've got a glass of something. Oh. I'm gasping. What? Oh, irresistible. No. Jack, your health. Thank you. Oh. The situation, Mr. Potts. Oh, that. Fine, fine. The country's in revolt. And we could all be dead by nightfall. Yes, well, it was fine. I got on swimmingly with young Asif. Can I mention that damn debt? The million and a half. He hasn't got it. What? Well, his father left three million. Not to Asif. He left it to the Begums of Oud. I tried to get it off them. I went to the Zilan. They wouldn't let me in. That's why the country's in revolt. You should have known better than to go near their women's quarters. They've hidden their treasure there. And now they know you're here, I reckon they'll try to move it. Well, what do you think we should do? We could bring up the army and attack the Zinana, only defended by all women and eunuchs. Who's in charge? General Barker. Damn it. We lose. No, here's my plan. You and Finney 
Go to the Durbar and tell Asif the governor's coming. Whilst he's busy with you, Jack and I will take the sepoys and occupy the gatehouse for Zinana. We won't go in, but they won't get the treasure out. When it's done, we'll fire a rocket and you retire gracefully and fetch the army. What do you say? It's a good scheme. Uh, Dick, I... Except that you and Cleveland will go to the Durbar and Hall and I will lead the sepoys. But in that... No, no, Mr. Pot. The treasure will be safe with us. But... Uh, Besides, uh, the nabob must see you. Your absence would be almost as conspicuous as your presence. Prize Day at Westminster. I never won a prize. Neither did I. Damn squish. I had a proposition for a portable part of that treasure. Bob, what shall we do if something goes wrong? Oh, we won't stand any nonsense. We'll capture the palace. <laughs> Here goes. Light of India, powerful on earth, Asif Abdullah, vizier of the empire, Nawab of Oud, good evening. I have the honor to inform you that Mr. Warren Hastings, Governor General of Bengal, is on his way to visit you. The two chief eunuchs, wily fellows. I thought eunuchs were stupid. No, it's doing it that knocks your brains out. <laughs> Why is he bringing an army? You never think to ask a fellow to sit down and have a glass of wine. Oh, cool. Treat myself like a cucumber. Throw myself away. To protect your kingdom against the Maratha Confederacy, Your Highness. Shoma Maru has been hachit born. You will destroy us. Nothing less will satisfy you. Avad mezle yek bag che ye del gosha mi mune. Aud is a pleasant garden. Agar behesht, ruye zamin bashi hamin jast. Hamin jast. Hamin jast. If there is a paradise on earth, it is here, it is here, it is here. Do you know what you will destroy? The fountains of learning and the flowers of beauty will dry and wither. Peace will fly with the swallows at the winter of your approach. The nightingale will never sing again. Come, Jackie, come. Uh, with your highness's permission, we will retire from the Durbar. The last one out is a sissy. Look, damn 
it. Against the door. Now we can't get out. Why the juice should anyone want to get out of a place like this? But eventually, eventually the army will come and get us out. In the meantime, we can select our prizes. Jack, could you conceive a more delightful way to pass a couple of hours? Here, take this home to your mother. Oh, the club just up. up. I'm merely filling out a pocket or two. By God, at this moment, I stand astonished at my own moderation. In a few hours' time, I'll get every diamond and ruby for a cup of water. Dear old fellow, why think of the worst? If we all thought of that, there'd be no India, there'd be no empire. No man would board a ship. What, risk drowning or a fever? No man would buckle on a sword. What, take the chance of a bullet? Not I. No man would die outside his bed. But then no man would live. Come on, Jack. Fill your pockets. I always had a mind to go to my accounting credit. No last words, Jack. I forbid it. They break spirits and they break hearts. Java here, Amra Michal. Mr. Zanasti. I want my treasure. You. You will destroy my treasure and kill two fools. I'd rather have the English and treasure. And you and no treasure. Toad? English toad? Eater of toads? Mother of fools! Mother of one fool? If they could understand even these half-men would laugh at you. Do you think the English will leave you two pies to scratch your fleas with? They march across our country like red ants eating the flesh from our bones. India. India. What will be left but bones and marble tombs and... Vultures in an empty sky. The womb of the world is plundered. The navel of the gods plucked out. India, my child, my husband. I cast myself into the fire that consumes you. I am the mother. I am the wife who dies, embracing you in a bed of fire. Lady Cleveland, I've just returned home. You're the first person I, I wrote to you. I sent you... 
Jack was my best friend. Thank you, sir. Robert Pott. He often mentioned you in his letters, Mr. Pott. That is my honor. He was a... It wasn't for nothing, you know. I insisted that Jack should have his share of the prize money, that you should have it. It seems we are all to have a share in India. You have yours and I have mine. The East India Company has its shares, and they have risen since the acquisition of that place. My husband had his share. My son has also had his share. <laughs>